So when people ask me about uh, how do I choose a, an anvil, the main thing to me is about how lively the anvil is. And what that means is I, don't, I pick up my hammer, I, I want to put a lot of hammer swings in it a day. So I don't want to have to pick my hammer up every, for every swing. So when I come up to an anvil that I don't know if I'm thinking about buying it, I want it to send my anvil, my hammer back to me. So if I drop this from this height, it wants to come up. I'm just dropping it, I'm not swinging it. It wants to come up about from where I started. So that's a pretty decent anvil. And if I'm gonna try the same thing on this one. <laughs> you can hear the sound too. <laughs> you can, yeah, you can definitely hear the difference. But some anvils are quieter than others. We have a fisher that's real lively, but it's not very loud. Um, as long as it bounces the hammer back, that's what I'm concerned about. But if I drop it and it's dead, that means every swing I'm gonna have to lift the hammer back up. You're doing and more work over time and you're gonna get fatigued twice as fast. Yeah, at least. <coughs> so, so if somebody was just getting started though and they wanted to just play around. Right. Could they play around on something like that? They could for a bit. Could for a bit. Um, this particular anvil mm -hmm. is a bit soft, so it will start to mushroom the edge out. Once an edge gets mushroomed out, meaning that this edge here is now straight, right? It'll start to do this. So once that does that, they might accidentally hit it. That's gonna cause a stress fracture inside, and that could chip off and fly away. And that can seriously injure someone. So you'd have to keep that dress, you know, take a grinder or a sander to it. And, and I would do that anyway to start with an anvil so that you don't have that sharp uh, 90 degree all the way on all the edges. You wanna take that down. Back. But she's absolutely correct. Like that's more effort for me to have to bring it up. There's actually a dead spot right there. I have to stop here and use muscle to pull it up. Where this one is just comes right back up. And I start pulling it up slightly from way up here. But that momentum's already going to where it wants to go. This one, I have to pull up right here. So that's more strength from down here to way up here. Because once I'm here, the hammer's up, and all I have to do now is fall. Here, I have to pull it up and then force it down. That's not what you want. So this is the better choice. This is very make super do. beginner, <laughs> you know. That's the make-do. Uh, yeah, it's the make-do, <laughs> all, all you can find. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I, you, my advice is usually find a, a, a blacksmith meeting uh, you know, a conference or, um, you know, find your local group. And at a lot of conferences, there are tailgate sales. And that's, you can find them on Craigslist. You know, you can find them on eBay. They tend to be a little, you know, you can't tell about the pricing. But usually at most blacksmithing events, there's going to be a tail, tailgate sales. And that's really uh, a good place to, to look for a real. I find your local uh, blacksmith association for that state. And a lot of guys on the websites will have sales. Um, they'll have like, uh, like a backyard sale or a fire sale or whatever they want to call it. But if you get on there, call the guy up, ask him about his anvil. He'll let you come up and try it out sometimes. Sometimes they won't, but Blacksmith, they're pretty good guys. And they'll let you try it out. So that's another avenue. Another avenue is find, do an online search for farrier supplies, horseshoeing supplies. And a lot of horseshoeing supplies sell anvils. And you can find some pretty decent anvils to get you by there too. So that's just a few avenues to go to find some anvils. I mean, find some anvils, sorry. You want to be relaxed, just let the hammer drop. And let it come back up. And that's relaxed. Now, when you see it on camera, from your side, it looks different than my side. So what I see as a darker color may look as a bright, bright white or orange to you, and it's not ready yet. So I see that right now. To me, that's a dull orange.